Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here. Hi. Back again with another repair video for you. I know you're gonna like this one because uh, this is a 2001 GMC Sonoma. Lots of you ask me about GM repairs. And this one is getting an engine and you really like it when I replace engines and stuff, especially trucks. Yes, we've done that quite a bit, haven't we? I can't tell you how many miles are on it. This thing's been sitting here a little bit at my shop, as you may have seen in the background of some of the videos. Some different things needed to happen in order to get to this point where we actually did the engine replacement, but today, today is the day. Today is the day we get started. This job has a, uh, I don't know, one of the reasons it's taken me so, taken me so long to get to this is because it, it, it has a personal uh, thing for me, and that is uh, this vehicle used to belong to Ryan Coffee, and Ryan is the son of some quote unquote good customers of mine. I've, I've known these people for several years, John and Judy, and their son Ryan started bringing me his truck some time ago. In fact, this truck was featured in the uh, tape of roller bearing video some time back, and I I, I actually, that tapered roller bearing video is, was my favorite video for the longest time. I, I really liked that video. I liked how everything came together with it. I liked the information and I liked the shots. I liked all of it. That was the Sonoma that I did that, that work on. It was a little over a year ago that, that um, Ryan succumbed to cancer. Ryan had a, uh, a diffuse intrinsic Pontine glioma, uh, DIPG as it's called, and it was it was a somewhat aggressive form of cancer, and uh, he lost his life, like I said, a, a little bit over a year ago. And I, I liked him, I liked him a lot, and uh, I do miss him. I miss him a great deal. But I was actually honored when his his parents came to me and asked if I could if I could put an engine in this Sonoma for them. So that's what I intend to do today. And, you know, I, I'm going to be sad to see this one go because, in a way, it's, it's kind of been a reminder of Ryan for me uh, having it here. But, but his, parents, his parents are looking to get it back on the road and, you know, have, have it as a little reminder of, them, of their son. And I would, I would want the same thing. So this whole video is dedicated to you, Ryan, wherever you may be. And, uh, you know, if I need a little help reaching some of those bolts that I can't quite reach or whatever, I'm looking for a little bit of help from you, man. But let's get started on this series of videos of this uh, engine replacement on this 2001 GMC Sonoma with a 2.2 liter engine. When I get the thing back together at the end, it has one of those digital, digital dashes. I will uh, give you the mileage at that time. So if you don't see it in this video, you may see it in one of the later videos. So please don't uh, berate me too much for not giving you the mileage right off the bat. So uh, let's, uh, let's get started. All right, here we have our 2.2 liter engine. And as you can see, someone has already begun the uh, disassembly. We have a new uh, long block that uh, we're gonna install into this. And that's all it is. I mean, it doesn't have any, any of this extraneous stuff on it. So we're gonna have to switch all this stuff over. But they've already removed the fan, the crank pulley, the fan shroud, all this stuff in the front. And one of the first things I like to do whenever I'm doing, like say an engine job, is to get a look around at everything and get, sort of formulate a plan of attack. Uh, and that way, you know, you're, you're more likely to be successful in your endeavors just as a result of having a plan for what you're gonna do. Now, like I said, they've already got a good start on this. And I think looking at this, well, one of the first things I'm going to need to do is, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to remove the hood or not. I might just leave it on there because I might just be able to push it up far enough to where I can gain access to the engine. That would be just Jim Dandy, in my opinion, uh, rather than having to take the hood off. Taking a, a hood off by yourself can be somewhat challenging. Um, and it looks like it's, to be honest, it looks somewhat, I'd have to look, get down inside this cowl here in order to access, it looks like there's a fastener right here. So if, if I'm able to just open this up a little bit more, I'll be happy with that. I'm gonna leave the air conditioner intact. I'm just gonna take this whole compressor assembly and then lay it on over here someplace out of the way. Uh, I think I'm gonna start by raising the vehicle and uh, draining the radiator. I'm gonna remove the radiator altogether. That way I don't risk bashing into it while I'm lifting the engine up out of here. Now this truck has a manual transmission 
as uh, you can see here. And I'm, I'm debating on how I'm going to handle that. I'm going to get up underneath here and get a good look at it. But, uh, well, actually, why don't we do that? Uh, why don't we, let's just start, and I will start draining the radiator, and we'll lift the vehicle up so that we can get up underneath to get to some of our other fasteners and things underneath there, and get a look at what we're dealing with so we can decide how we're going to deal with the disconnecting this engine from the transmission, or if we're going to pull the engine and transmission out as a unit, deal with all that stuff outside the truck and put it all back in as a unit. Um, haven't really decided that yet, but let's get underneath and get a look at what we got. I know that somebody is going to ask where I placed my jack. There is this support that uh, uh, connects the front suspension to the frame of the vehicle. I'm going to just jack it up right in the center of that and um, place my jack stands up under the frame. One thing that's nice about working on some trucks is some of them have a full frame like this, so it's really a no-brainer where to place your jack stands. So when I place the jack stands, I'm going to be putting them right up under here, under this frame. Welcome to Under the Sonoma. Um, we are looking at the transmission here. It is a manual transmission. And I'm looking at uh, two things. The first is that on some manual transmissions, the bell housing is actually separate from the transmission. On this one, that's not the case. It's all one piece. So on those transmissions, what you can sometimes do is just take the transmission out of the back of the bell housing and it's actually really easy to handle. Manual transmissions aren't like automatics. They aren't big, heavy slush boxes. They're, you know, a little, a little bit easier to deal with for the most part. Um, but looking at this, being all one piece, uh, I can't do that. So I'm going to have to come up with a different solution. Uh, I have one of two choices. I can do what I can to, to get around all these uh, bell housing bolts and everything and and remove the transmission that way, or, or remove the engine that way, Get disconnect the engine from the transmission, leave the transmission inside the truck. Option B is to remove the transmission with the engine and deal with all this stuff outside the truck. Now, uh, honestly, access isn't too bad to that stuff up in there, to uh, those bolts up in the top of the bell housing that, that connect the transmission to the engine. Um, one other thing to note here is this is the uh, feed line to the slave cylinder. Uh, this is basically for your clutch. The slave cylinder activates the throttle bearing and engages and disengages the clutch for you. Now this is looking like it's all one piece maybe. Uh, I've seen this type of thing before. It, it may be multiple pieces. I don't know. I won't know until I get in there. But if I left the transmission in the vehicle, I wouldn't have to deal with that. However, if I go to take the transmission out of the vehicle, well, uh, I am going to have to deal with that. So in order, to, in order to take the transmission out with the engine, I'd have to be concerned with uh, where the shifter linkage goes through the floor. I'd have to disconnect that. Uh, looks like I got a little bit of wiring here. Looks like I got some fuel lines that are attached up in this area that go to the engine. Uh, but I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of grateful that this is a two-wheel drive rather than a four-wheel drive. I'm also grateful that it is a four-cylinder instead of a six-cylinder. I have dealt with these uh, medium trucks from GM uh, with the six cylinders in them, and they are nowhere near as easily accessible as the stuff is with this four-cylinder. So I'm I'm kind of grateful with for that. So now we're we're faced with that decision again of uh, either taking the transmission with us or leaving it here and just disconnecting our engine from the transmission and dealing with stuff that way. That's a, that's a tough choice if I'm honest. But there's a, a fair amount of stuff to disconnect. There's one of our engine mounts right there. Got another one over here. Uh, 
they don't look too bad. That one looks more accessible from the front. This one looks fairly accessible from back here. It's all pretty straightforward stuff, really. I'm not seeing anything that's looking like too much of a surprise, but I'm, I'm still on the fence of whether or not I'm gonna, gonna pull this uh, transmission with the engine or just leave it in here and deal with it uh, that way. So I'm gonna drain the engine oil and I'm also going to drain the uh, radiator simultaneously and think about it. Back in a minute. A couple of things I want to mention here, as long as we're under here, is that one, I put on my safety glasses, and the reason for that is, is whenever you're working under a vehicle like this, there's a potential for stuff to fall down in your eyes. Personally, I hate that, so I strongly advise you to uh, get some safety glasses. But the other thing that I'm going to do while I'm draining the oil and the coolant is I'm going to soak the exhaust studs, bolts, whatever, with penetrating oil. That way that exhaust comes off a little easier. Getting the exhaust loose is probably going to be one of the most challenging parts of the job, believe it or not. Uh, so you want to make sure that you're able to disconnect from that. Getting the coolant out may prove to be a bit more difficult uh, because that right there is the uh, petcock in order to drain the coolant out, but it's looking like it's some strange configuration or Maybe somebody broke something off of it. I'm not sure which, but truth be told, I can just as easily remove the lower radiator hose and I'll accomplish the same task. You can start by taking the overflow tube off. All right, my bucket's in position up under all this stuff. Little trick I used to break hoses loose from their mounts. It's like we've got Dex cool in here. That's why it's orange like that. I get my upper hose disconnected. I believe the fan shroud holds the top of the radiator in place and since that's already been removed, our radiator is virtually disconnected now. Um, if this were an automatic transmission, there'd be Transmission lines go into the radiator, but that's not the case here. We have a manual transmission, so the radiator doesn't have any of those lines. So we're just able to, at this point, just lift it on up out of here. Ooh, this is gross. Okay, well, I think I know what one of the problems is. You can definitely see that this radiator has split open and broken. Uh, but also, look, look at all this debris down here. I've said it in the past in other videos that, you know, particularly the overheat videos, that you have to look for stuff like this obstructing the airflow through the radiator. I'm not saying that's what caused this split right here, but this split right here means that we're going to be replacing this radiator also. Looks like they wanted us to stick in like a quarter inch extension or something into this in order to get the petcock out, and that's what I would have done. That's what I would have done, but I didn't. Or you might even be able to have some special tool or something that goes in there. But before I put this uh, radiator in the scrap pile, I want to take these little rubber boots off. There's one on each side. I believe they're both the same. Yeah, they're both the same. Given that there's already a nice parts pile started here in the bed of the truck, it seems like as good a place as any to start keeping stuff. Um, I would keep these inside. I'd put these back where they go in, in the truck, but I'm just not going to do that right now because getting the engine in and out, I might bump them or lose them or something. They just seem safer back here for the moment. Well. Now that I've got that radiator out of there, I need to figure out what I'm going to do with this, uh, this hood. Before I get too deep and just pop this hood off of here, there are a couple things I need to consider. It looks like this is for the windshield wiper, windshield washers, this tube here, and I'm probably going to need two hands to do it, but I'm going to need to disconnect this. And there's also a, uh, a body ground that goes to the hood here. But if I disconnected it from here, I'd also have to disconnect this clip, whereas I could just as easily come down here to where it connects to the body and just disconnect this fastener here, and this, this piece will come off of the hood, and, you know, everybody's happy. It's a 10 millimeter. I'm just going to take the nut and just put it on the stud so that when I go to put it back in, it'll go in that much easier. Great, now let's disconnect the ends. Judging by how much the engine has been disassembled, 
I would say that somebody already started on this job. I say that because I believe this is also held in underneath when uh, at the moment it's not. All right, I'm gonna try to avoid being like this because if this side of the hood suddenly drops while I'm trying to disconnect this fastener, um, I don't want my hand to be in here. So I'm gonna go in from this side. Uh, this is, these are both 13 millimeter. I'm gonna hold with my wrench and come in on the other side with my ratchet. Also want to be careful um, at the bottom of this windshield here because if I'm not careful I could crack the windshield and that would not be a good thing. I'm just going to leave the bolt in there for now, that way I can just, well, I'm going to leave it in there for now. I'm going to disconnect the other side and I'm going to take the bolts out one at a time. But I'm going to put the nut someplace where I can get to it, like right up here on the cowl where I can grab it uh, when I need it. I'm going to repeat the process over here. Sorry. Now I believe I can take this bolt out, actually. I can take it out and it's just resting there. That, that's, a good, that's a good thing. I may not be able to do that on the other side, but I'm gonna attempt to do it on this side. I'm just gonna take my bolt, stick it up there in the windshield wiper. So we'll just call that a win that it's staying there. The best, the best way to do this is with a buddy. All right, I'm gonna try to get the fastener around on this side. I can just lift up on the hood a little bit, pull it right out of there. And actually I'm gonna move both these fasteners over to the windshield wiper. It's like the whole world opened up. Well, looking around at this, it looks like, well, I, I know I'm gonna have to take the AC uh, compressor out, so I think I'm just gonna start with that. Looks like we've got a couple of 15s maybe down here that hold the compressor on. But first, let's uh, disconnect the clutch. Would this be easier with two hands? Yes. Would it be nearly as exciting video? No. One fastener. There's my second fastener, and they both look to be the same length, which means it doesn't matter which side they go back in on. Looks like there's a couple more fasteners in the back here. Ones in the front were 15s, these are 13s here. make things easier for me, I do this sometimes. I'm just gonna thread these in to where they go. That way I'll know where they go. I'm actually gonna do the same thing here on the compressor. I'm just gonna thread them in a couple of threads. When you're doing engine jobs, you got a lot of fasteners to deal with and you're not sure where they all go at the end of the day. I mean, I, I, I can't remember where everything goes. So I usually try to do little tricks like this so that it makes it easier to put together when I'm done. And as long as I'm over here by the battery, now that I'm thinking about it, I probably should have started this video and said step one should be disconnecting the negative battery cable. I disconnected the negative battery cable on this some time ago, but this prevents like arcing or any kind of problems that could come up while you're taking all this stuff apart. So it's like, it's like putting a patient to sleep. Just with big jobs like this, disconnect the negative battery cable to start with. Another thing that's gonna need to come off is gonna be this power steering pump. I'm gonna wanna leave it and its lines in here. So I've got a little zip tie there. There is a fastener that's up in behind here, right here. Feels like, feels like that one's a 13 millimeter. And then there'll be other ones that you can gain access to from inside here. That's kind of why there's these holes um, to imagine there's a, yeah, there's a third right there. 
So we'll get rid of those and we should be able to slide the power steering pump on up out of there and get that out of our way. All right, I'm gonna start with this difficult one that's in the back here. It is a 13 millimeter and I'm just gonna slip in underneath this bracket and try this instead. Now that it's loose from its mounts, I should be able to work it out of here. Unless there's another fastener somewhere, which I'm getting the impression there just might be, and there is. All right, I'm gonna use this quarter inch ratchet with a 13 on it to uh, sneak back in here. Yeah. At least it fell all the way through. Found a nice home for the pump right here. I've taken the bolts of the power steering pump and grouped them all together up here on the windshield wiper. As long as we're taking things off, I'm thinking this part of the air box. Looks like there's just a flathead screw for a hose clamp right there. Looks like there's a 10 millimeter here. And I think, yeah, there's a PCB hose back there in the back that needs to come off. All right, you can disconnect the throttle position sensor. Looks like the map sensor. Uh, that probably is the idle air control valve, I'm thinking. Um, there's another vacuum line here. I am going to have to remove this intake and swap it over to the new one anyway. I'm actually thinking what I'll do is I'll just remove the fasteners for the throttle body and just remove the throttle body and just lay that over to the side over here. There's four fasteners for this. Yeah, check it out. I've just Left the fasteners right in, laid it all off to the side. I got plenty of room to work in here. Looking at this, I think the next thing I want to do is get these heater hoses out of here. One of these has a uh, metal tube that looks like it's attached to the oil dipstick and runs down here. And the other is attached to another metal tube to the thermostat housing and everything up here up front and the coolant temperature sensor. I I think the best way to do this one is to remove these two fasteners in the front. Looks like there's one fastener here, and I can just take that whole thing out as an assembly. I'm just going to do that one like that. This other one I'm going to kind of do the same way. Disconnect from here, here, uh, on the dipstick tube. And also, looks like there's a small rubber connection down here that goes into a pipe. I think I'll, in addition to that, I'm just going to remove the rest of this lower radiator hose so I can gain access to it. I believe this is the water pump here off to the side. I'm not going to remove that. I can do that after I've got it out of the vehicle. Um, after that, it looks like we're looking at this uh, AIR uh, pipe that runs back here. And I'll probably just can disconnect the, the rubber connection here, but that should open up a lot of real estate here to get back into bell housing bolts, things like that if I need to. Um, any electrical connections that I might need to concern myself with. Uh, we've still got some back here as far as the fuel injectors. Um, that's, that's one of my main concerns with this. It's always nice to try and find like a giant connector somewhere 
that, that goes to the engine that you can just disconnect that giant connector and leave everything connected up to the engine. I looked, I didn't see one of those. So I'm kind of stuck disconnecting every sensor and fishing the wires out, which I'm not excited about if I'm honest, but if that's what I gotta do, that's what I gotta do. these pliers. Perfect for things like this. Now, when you're breaking hoses loose, you want to sort of work them back and forth. But be careful because this may be plastic. Oh, sorry. This may be plastic or brass going into the heater core. Both of which could be very brittle, break or bend. Two fasteners to hold this thermostat housing on the front of the block here. Looks like the ignition wires are also attached. I'm gonna take the ignition wires out. huge assembly. We're gonna have to replace that gasket but we will deal with that when we need to. Just gonna take these and put them just right here for the moment. We talked about taking this lower radiator hose the rest of the way off of here. I say we do that. Never have trouble with a clamp like this. Silicone spray. Silicone is the best thing to lubricate rubber with. I'm gonna do something I rarely do. I will push, push the clamp forward just to get it off. That's the key to stuff like this is patience and be smart, you know. If you're getting beat up by something, try something else. Huh. That's funny. Somebody in their infinite wisdom put a little bump on this, which is why I was having so, so much trouble getting this clamp off of here. And I'm gonna have to unclamp it in order to get it past that, or compress the clamp in order to get it past that, that bump there. That wasn't cool. Or, you know what, I'm not even going to bother. I'm just going to leave it there. And then when I put the hose on, I'm going to pull the clamp back up in the opposite direction. That clamp's obviously not going anywhere. Work smart, not hard, people. Things usually go back together a lot easier than they come apart. They do make a nice tool on a cable that works good for dealing with hose clamps that are positioned like this, but I found that I smack them around with a pry bar and get them where I need them to be usually.
This one here that holds this tube on is a 10 millimeter. One heater hose assembly. Yay. I think uh, now's a good time to disconnect this ARR tube. Silicone spray. Hopefully that'll make the clamp move a little bit easier. This feeds fresh air to the exhaust to help uh, the catalytic converter burn off more hydrocarbons. Well, in this case, it looks like they're running it right into the exhaust manifold to keep down hydrocarbon emissions. Add a little bit of air to unburn fuel. If it's hot enough, it'll just burn. You won't have to worry about it. Clamp here to undo. There's the ARR pump living right down there. Wow, we've uh, Made a lot of progress, a lot of real estate. So I guess my next trick is to try to figure out where harnesses are going and how I'm going to handle them. Okay, for the time being, I moved my AC compressor to the other side so I can gain access over to this side of the engine compartment. Looks like we got what looks like a, a ground cable and another cable that is attached to the intake manifold here with this eight millimeter fastener. In addition, um, this is the uh, access to the EVAP uh, system, which also has an attachment here at the intake manifold. And lastly, we have an attachment here for the fuel line that uh, runs up to the fuel injectors on the engine. Now, this line, I don't have to remove from the intake manifold unless I'm removing the intake manifold, but I believe for this connector, we can just Pull it this way. The leverage is our friend. Okay, and that's just gonna hang there. This is a quick connect fitting, so I'm gonna have to get my tool, put that down in here so we can get past the retainer. Once I do that, we'll be able to push the fuel line back and disconnect the fuel line. Move on to other stuff here. Now, I just noticed that I could very easily disconnect the one of the main connectors going to the alternator, so I just did that. Um, and there's one more connection here on the back, which would be very difficult to show you, but I'm feeling what feels like, no, uh, maybe that's a, not sure if that's a 13, feels like a 13 that's going to that main red wire coming off the back of the alternator. So I'm gonna disconnect that as long as I'm here before I go grab my tool for the fuel line. I was right, it was 13. Just sort of thread it a couple of times on the stud. That way I can find it when I go to reinstall it. For now, we'll just take that alternator cable and move that out of the way and since I was working on that fuel line, I'm gonna go get the tool to disconnect that. This is a set of tools you need to deal with these fuel lines. I'm guessing it's about this size. It could be the smaller size. But you need these tools in order to deal with these types of connectors. And all you gotta do is get the tool on there, push it down in, you can pull the line up sometimes so it'll fit down in underneath there. Once it's under, you should be able to, there we go, disconnect that fuel line. And all you gotta do to put it back on is just push the line back up on there. How about we get rid of this connection for this cable here, eight millimeter.
next one for the EVAP. <clears throat> what to do next? So I've been thinking here about how to deal with the wires and everything that are that are on this engine, whether it would be easier just to take the intake manifold off to get to everything underneath, or I'm actually thinking of removing the alternator and seeing if I could get in through there. I've already disconnected its electrical connections. I believe there's one fastener here on the back and one down here on the front. I think once I've disconnected those, I can remove the alternator and I'll have access to a lot of whatever these things are going to underneath. At first I thought this fastener was a 13, but no, it's a 15. So yeah, if you're an engineer, do things like this. Just find ways to make it more difficult to gain access to the stuff that you need to get to in order to perform a given task like, say, removing an engine. Also, 15 on the front here, I believe. I lied, it's a 13. Well, let's just hope that it's just these two, because if it's more than that, we, that ain't gonna be fun. I get the feeling that there is at least one more. I find it hard to believe that they would make it so uh, accessible. <laughs> what would be the point of that? Now, there's someone else somewhere. I ah, found it on the back side. Right about here. <laughs> there's a, another brace that is uh, holding this guy in here. To me, it feels like a 13. I almost think this is what you need to do in order to change the ignition wires not pull the engine, but ignition wires are routed to the coil packs which are down on the back of the block here. So in order to route those wires, I might have to get a little fancy. If I can, I'm gonna replace these wires since we got the opportunity. Falls right out of there now. So again, I've taken my fasteners and just place them where they go before I set this aside. And I suppose the question is, did that get us what we wanted? Well, sort of. Looks like I'm gonna have to remove this bracket because some of these are routed up underneath, which ain't so cool. Uh, but there are quite a few electrical connections here that I will need to disconnect in order to remove the engine. I guess what I'll do is I'll remove that, that bracket that was holding the alternator on so that I can get the rest of those harness connections disconnected. Uh, there's a body ground there that you're looking at, or I should say an engine ground. That's just silly. The bottom one's 15, top one's 13. It's almost like a German car. They like to use like a different size fastener for everything. There we go. Bracket removed. Remember now, the small fastener goes up top. This uh, engine ground. Part of this harness, I know it's got to come loose. I think it's a 15 millimeter. Uh, gonna need a bigger boat. Now, despite the fact that uh, 
And we're not going to be reusing this block. I'm still going to put this in this place so that when we transfer stuff over to the new block, I know that that needs to be there. Looks like we've got another connection back here. I'm thinking maybe a crank sensor. This one up here is the oil pressure sending unit. Looks like we're attached back here somewhere. I think it's time to do some stuff underneath here. Because I think we've just about reached our limits for up top. Mm -hmm. 